Bienvenue, bonjour, welcome. Today we'll be speaking with the author of I Believe in Me, Scarlett Lavander. Let's welcome her. Thank you for having you. Let's get started. So what is your favorite part about the book? I think the message alone, the vibrant art, the abstract, but having people of all ages reading it to their children and saying, I needed to hear that. The first time I heard that, it made me go, wow, yeah, that's true. why I wrote sure. it. Yes. Like, because I, did, I, I didn't mean it to be just a children's book. I wanted it to help anyone right so I, I I actually teared up and I tear up now and I hit when I say that or when someone says their favorite line because in it's French they say say la vérité it's the truth yes. okay so my favorite quote in the book was remember that life is a gift and how you decide to open it I think that was a very inspirational passage of the book for me. Um, what brought you to bring all of those encouragement words together? I think we've all had those days when you don't even know if you want to get out of bed or wake up, and especially after the pandemic and everything. I had to read my own book. And I just started jotting things down or writing positive things down and affirmations. And I figured if I could put it together and help one person. I like bright colors in general as an artist, but the poetry. Having people of all ages literally say to me, I was reading that to my child and I needed to hear that. Okay. When did you start writing? I actually started writing poetry from the age of 16 when I was not diagnosed with PTSD, but that was my therapy. And I published it first in New York City in 2017. Okay, so not that long ago. Yeah, I have an age today. Um, <laughs> I republished it when I changed my name, but uh, I felt it was a need uh, words that people, other people needed to hear that right. would help other people. Yes. So what was your true reason for writing I Believe in Me? Hope. For hope. It's awesome. For everybody. What is I, it? I really like how you said that that's your favorite line. Yeah. Because one thing I would say when I was working in New York on the train floor, no pressure, um, was if or what or why or who you always must have faith in you right so Absolutely. even when you're having the hardest time if you lost your job for no reason if you had to get food stamps if you lost someone close to you the whole reason i wrote the book mm -hmm. is because i had been through so much adversity and i was really good at putting on a smile yeah so tell me, what is your favorite part about writing this book? What was your favorite part of the process in writing it? I, I think God's and God's wink, God winks, and I know that actually because I was living in New York City and I had already written it and I overheard an illustrator needing a job and met her and we just clicked. So I would sketch it out and we just collaborated. So it actually kind of pushed me what I already wanted to do. Right. So it was even more exciting. <laughs> and then every time we would meet, we would just discuss the ideas and she loved it as well. And her name is Lily Rosie Bull. Love you. Um, Awesome. So that was just, if you ever get stuck in a project that you know you're passionate about, don't stop. You never know when you're, it might not be a God wink, but it might just not have your eyes open. Right. Absolutely. Was there any metaphorical reference to 
the illustration of the main character being an ant. Oh, absolutely. Because there was one review saying, well, ants, this is a, you know, peculiar choice of illustration in the sense of ants never travel alone. They always travel together. So is the fact that he's alone, is that symbolizing something? Is there a deeper meaning to it? I think there's a lot of different meanings to it. And that's why I say it's not just for children, it's for adults as well. So it's the irony of how much we put on ourselves. Right. And it's an ant worrying about that but that we can also be alone and be strong and make it and we just have to tell ourselves that right and know that and believe it and if you notice throughout the book he grows and he gets bigger and the city gets smaller that's what i like the irony in it too so that's what i really loved about working with lily is the collaboration of putting our ideas together and yeah making making it a metaphor yeah i've been very blessed with people who've read it from five years old to 50. 80 years or yeah and i mean i have an age today but uh, yeah 25 forever <laughs> that's what my mimi always says yes it's all about perspective i think so too if i can if it can make one person stay better that was my only goal. Awesome. Because I was hurting, but I wanted to make someone else know that they're not alone. Right. Reading one line sometimes is all you need. can change your whole mindset yes. if you allow it to. Right. When did you feel the need and the want to become an author? I was always an artist and musician, so I always wrote, and I just know I had to, to publish. Since Be you've published the book, have you gotten a lot of response and reviews from it? I've actually given more away than I even tried to sell because I didn't even try to market it. I wanted to, s I, I, if I saw someone that knew that might help. Right. I would guess. So earlier you were telling me that um, the illustrations were actually by a friend of mm -hmm. yours. Well, I actually met her in New York City. That's awesome. And so we collaborated. So you actually have my uh, board name. <laughs> yes, on the book. No, I have my board name. <laughs> um, so we kind of collaborated. And I like the irony about the ant being so small and we're worried about these big battles. Some might question, was this perhaps a personal reflection on what you went through in going to the big city? Oh, absolutely. I was scared, but I knew I could do it. And I think that was my way of motivating myself, reassurance. Right. And hope. Again. And others, yes. And again, if, and I saw other people, I was there in 2008 when the economy crashed and grown men coming down the elevators with taking off their ties, sobbing. I saw both sides. And if I am gifted enough to write that and have that way to do that, to help anybody, then that's why I'm here. Right. Now, some might look at this book and say, oh, obviously it's a children's novel based on the illustrations and um, the length of it. I mean, it, it is. I mean, it's, it's... Yes, but you said you had, you wanted it to be for Who doesn't like color? color? <laughs> I like color. Absolutely. So you wrote it for both children and adults. Yes. So it's poetry. It's been compared to Dr. Seuss, but I'm pretty sure he outweighs me, but... Yeah. Absolutely, because it rhymes. But it's all poetry throughout the whole thing. But what if I do something wrong, or seem to not get along? You can keep worrying and get nowhere, and breathe and believe in you and there. Believe in what and who you are, believe and breathe, and you will go far. 
Remember that life is a gift and how you decide to open it. Always walk with your head held high. Be kind, be true, and take things in stride. Reap deep down inside of you and take on each day with all you do. This book is very poetic. It obviously rhymes a whole lot like Dr. Seuss, as you had mentioned. Tell me, how did you come up with some of these poetic phrases? Was it one night you got the whole book done, or did it take a couple of years? I think for sure a couple of phrases popped out, but I actually write music, which to me is poetry, and it flows together. Absolutely. So I started finding myself that it became a character. But that character was real, and I just wanted to put it where people could grab it and hopefully get help from it. And not just help, not saying everyone needs help, but just pick me up. Yes. yes. You know, a smile, just something to make you realize that you're not alone and that it's not over, that there's always other wrongs. And what message do you want to give your readers before and after diving into this book? Number one, buy it. And number two, read it slowly. In, really a, in a quiet slowly. place. Yeah. Because I know it helps me sometimes still. I mean, I still suffer. I always will from invisible diseases, as they Life call is them. hard. Life is hard. Do you yeah. have any plans to further write any other books in mm. publishings? I have a full book in the works, and I kind of want to do something along these lines too. I love art, and then we have the artist sell, and yeah. That's awesome. Just blessed and excited. So tell me a little bit about your life story. What brought you to New York? Which time? The first time. When you were in 2017. I just graduated from Mississippi State and I was president of the business school. I studied in Korea at Kwang Woon University and uh, University of Laval in Quebec. So I oh had gosh. three, well, two degrees and a half, but I had to intern to finish. So I interned in fashion and the economy crashed. And that's been a lot of realization, even seeing it from people there, but my family, everybody. Right. Um, so I educated myself more. Yeah. Uh, and the back and just worked on things that, and I think that's so true right now, especially in the pandemic. Like people are working okay. from home, you have more time yes. to actually do things you may have never done in years that you enjoy but they bring you joy right joy and hope i know it sounds cheesy but it's you need it yeah what brings you we are here in dallas today what brought you to dallas and the south in texas everyone asks me where i'm from and i'm laughing because i <laughs> i never know what to say but i have to say i was mostly born and raised Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Okay. And I was trying to hold back that accent. I'm not, it, it comes out sometimes. Uh, You're Southern Belle. You're Southern I went to school in Mississippi State and kind of ping pong, Korea, Quebec, New York, Memphis, back to New York. So, and, now um, and now Dallas by default. Uh, but. They have some of the best doctors here, and they have truly saved my life. Yes. So tell me a little bit about what that entails. And that all kind of relates back to what the book is about, is the invisible diseases that we don't talk about. I didn't know I was harming myself. Right. And I didn't have something positive to look at or to read to. I just did the steps. What everybody tells you to do, kind of? Puppet. Right. And I was good. I made good money. I made great money. 
until I was 67 pounds and on life support in Dallas, Texas. And they saved my life. I know who did too. <laughs> but it made me, I changed my name legally from Jennifer to Scarlett. I like it better. I do too. <laughs> and I just know that I had a purpose to tell a story, which I haven't told the full story yet. This is merely a glimpse of positivity. The openness is coming. Right. We look forward to it. Hey, well, it was great speaking with you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Cheers. To your first book. Slum and on to your second. <laughs> Here comes a triple man. Where are my keys? I love